Good morning and welcome to this morning service for our, our last Sunday in 2020. Well, I'm sure everyone thinks what a year it's been. But as we move on into 2021, we do it knowing that our faith and our trust is in Jesus Christ. I'm going to light a Christmas candle. Just going to light just one. I think you can just see it. Now, I, I hope you've got a candle to light as well, just to remind ourselves that Jesus is the morning star, that he is the light of the world. And so as we come to worship him together, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that despite the difficulties and troubles of this last year, thank you that you are faithful to your promises. So, Lord, as we come to worship today, we come as people who know that we need to put our trust in you. And so we ask that you bless us and help us as we worship together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our first song is one called His Name Shall Be. So sweet and clear 
Good morning, everyone. Happy Christmas. I hope it's been amazing. Thank you for having me with you today. I wonder what it's been like. Has it been a little bit upside down? Maybe not had the craziness that we're used to having, the fun chaos as we lead up to Christmas. Or maybe we've been busy, but not with the normal busy, the exciting busy that leads up to Christmas Day. Maybe Christmas Day was very chaotic and very messy, but not in the way it usually is. It's all been a little bit different this year. But through December, we've been looking at different themes from a messenger called Isaiah, a special messenger. And he said when Jesus came, he would be a wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father, and then Prince of Peace. And that's what we're looking at today. Often around Christmas, we say peace to you. But has this Christmas really been peaceful? Or have we been looking at the wrong piece? Now, I have a story that goes back, a story about chaos and panic. Well, from the disciples. But, you know, Jesus, even as he grew up, Jesus knew all about peace and brought peace. Jesus was a peace bringer. So we're looking at the lake that got a little bit stormy, got a little bit scary. And the disciples, well, they got a little bit scared. And so this is the story from the Lion Storyteller Bible, from our Bob Bible, as we call it. And it's just about how Jesus brought peace on a stormy lake. Here it goes. It was a perfect day. The sky was blue and the waves too. And a gentle breeze whipped the wave tips white and foamy. Jesus sat at the side of the lake and talked to people about God. God is your father, he said. He dresses the flowers in beautiful colours. He makes the birds have enough to eat. But you are his sons and his daughters. Don't you think he can clothe you and feed you? So trust him and stop worrying your lives away. When Jesus had finished teaching, he was tired. So he called his closest friends and together they piled onto the boat and set across the lake for home. Jesus yawned. He stretched. He laid down his head and to the rhythm of the waves rocking the boat, he fell asleep. It was a perfect end to the perfect day. And then suddenly the day was not so perfect. The sky turned black, the lake too, and a wild wind stirred the waves up tall and stormy. The boat rocked right the boat rocked left, the boat rocked up and down. The boat rocked so hard, in fact, that Jesus' friends were sure they would all drown. But Jesus slept right through it, except for the odd snuffle and snore. <sighs> Jesus, his friends called at last. Jesus, wake up. We're all going to drown. So Jesus woke. He sat up, then he rubbed his eyes and he stood up. It was all anyone else could do to stay on their feet. But Jesus, Jesus stood up and then very calmly, he said to the wind, quiet now. And then to the waves, he said, settle down. And they did. Then Jesus turned to his friends and said, you didn't need to be frightened. You didn't need to worry. All you had to do was trust me. See, everything is calm. And so it was. The sky was blue, the lake too, and the little waves splashed happily along the side of the boat. It was a perfect day again. See, although it's hard and the disciples were actually with Jesus as he was telling them to be calm. They got a little bit stressed, a little bit worried because maybe they just took their eye off him for a moment. They just took their trust out of him for a moment. Things are messy at the moment in this world and things are chaotic. But when Jesus came, God promised that he would be the Prince of Peace. And so this Christmas... This time that we're off, 
Why don't we stop a moment and just accept that Jesus will be the Prince of Peace, that this storm too will pass, that it will all be okay. Let's trust in him that little bit more. Have a fantastic rest of your Christmas time. For God to bring peace to this world, he did something massive and special. So together we're going to sing, He Made a Way in a Manger. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you're the God who is concerned about us and the God who loves us. And so you're the one that we can come to seeking help in times of trouble. 
Lord, you know that these last months have been ones that have been full of trouble and difficulty for us in so many ways. So Lord, we want to remember those who we have lost during this last year for all sorts of reasons. Lord, we thank you that those who aren't with us anymore are safe with you today. Lord, we want to pray for those for whom this Christmas has become a time of great difficulty with the last minute change in Christmas arrangements. Lord, we pray for those who've been separated from their loved ones this Christmas time. Lord, we pray for those who are unwell. Particularly, we remember anyone who's struggling with COVID. But we remember those as well who are waiting for treatment in hospitals, those who are waiting for the results of tests, those who are living in fear and in worry. Lord, be a source of hope and of peace to them. Lord, we pray for our, our nation as we look forward to the further rolling out of the vaccine. We pray that it would continue to work against this new variant of the virus. Lord, we pray you'd give our leaders wisdom in the decisions that need to be made. Lord, we pray for those who are worried about their jobs, worried about their finances and worried about their future. Lord, we pray for your blessing for your peace on all of those whose lives are full of worry at this moment and lord we pray for ourselves lord pray that you'd help us to lift our eyes towards heaven give us a fresh vision of who you are and who you are to us and what that means for us help us to know that nothing can separate us from your love and so help us to go into the new year with confidence and courage, serving you, the living God. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our next carol is the first Noel. Shepherd 
we're going to continue to look at that passage from Isaiah 9 and today's theme or today's title for Jesus is Prince of Peace. We want to read from Isaiah 9 and verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness. From that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. So I've got a quiz for us this week. It's got something to do with Prince and a few other things as well. So question one. Who played Robin Hood in the 1991 film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves? Question two. In the Bible, what is the name of King Saul's son, who was David's friend, Jonathan? Question three. Which American film actress married Prince Rainier of Monaco in 1956? Question four. Who succeeded King David? Question five. Which artist sang Purple Rain? And the answer is not Dan Thompson, although he did do a great cover of it. Question six. How old was Jesus when he was circumcised? Question seven. Who did Cinderella marry? Question 8. What title was bestowed upon Prince Charles in 1969? Question 9. Which British Prime Minister declared he had made peace for our time in 1938? And question 10. According to the cowl in the bleak midwinter, what should we be giving to Jesus? I'll give you the answers a little bit later on. This um, phrase we're looking at today, Prince of Peace, what a, a great title that would be if we could all have a little bit of peace as we come to the end of 2020. What a year it's been. Well, that's what everyone's saying. I looked about one or two facts, really. Apparently, more people are looking at horoscopes and um, fortune tellers than is normal because people are worried and concerned about what the future is for them. There is a, a rise in anger on our streets. I think it was already at a, at a high level, and I think it is even worse. I read somewhere that there's a rise in suicides because people attempted suicides, because people are just desperately worried about what the future will hold and they feel they can't cope. There is no peace. Isaiah wrote to these people who were locked in trouble and difficulties and there's battles been raging and he says to them, to us a child is born and he will be called the Prince of Peace. Like always, these um, words need careful thinking about and careful understanding as to what actually it might mean because the word peace is the word shalom and that's like total peace well-being if you have the peace of god it is to have total well-being so my translation would be of prince of peace would be to understand that jesus is the commander of my total well-being if you think about jesus and think about some of the promises he made he promises to be continually present with us 
If you're like me, sometimes when you have the house to yourself, I wouldn't want to live on my own. But sometimes if I have the house to myself, it's quite nice, really. Um, a bit of space. But being with Jesus isn't like that. And Jesus' presence with us isn't like that. Jesus' presence with us is one that brings us hope and it brings us comfort. We know that we have someone who is there for us. And Jesus is continually concerned about us. When our children were younger and out at night, I used to worry about them. They were always on my mind. I believe that you and me are always on the mind of Christ. And so I think about those two things about what it means to have Jesus as the commander of my total well-being that he is continually present with us looking to work for our good and that he is always thinking about us i'm not sure if you're worried about what happens when you die well i believe all of us are going to stand before the throne of god and i imagine that the devil is going to there's going to be some scales and i sometimes imagine the devil is going to heap all of my sins onto the scales and he's going to have to have quite a big dish because there's a lot of them so it's going to be a big heap and there's very little i can do to weigh down the other side to try and set the balance right then in my mind i like to think of a nail dropping on it and then another and then another until the nails on it outweigh the sins on this side those nails perhaps they come from the manger in bethlehem but perhaps they come from the cross of calvary but all of my sins and all of your sins are dealt with they're forgiven they're paid for by what jesus did for us you see we shouldn't be worried this word peace should be one that we hold on to today you see peace is plainly promised in the bible it's a common theme isaiah prophesied it here in um, isaiah 9 the angels sang about it in the gospel when they were singing to the shepherds on the hillside over bethlehem and i believe that jesus actually delivered it that jesus brought peace as a reality into the lives of people on in his day so what is this peace that we need well the first thing is that we need to make peace with god our relationship with god is well it's done away with by sin we destroy our relationship with god by the things we do wrong and so jesus comes to make that relationship right he comes to bring peace between us and god the second way jesus brings peace he brings us peace with each other I think the challenge of that is to see others as christ sees them are you someone who sometimes finds it difficult to see the the good in other people well i think it's easy to be like that but jesus always sees the best in us he sees the possibilities he looks on us as his children and he longs to build a relationship with us one of the things I've noticed in society when talking to people, there's a phrase that's now used sometimes about people, and people say, well, they say, well, not that I hold a grudge, when actually they mean just the opposite. They do hold a grudge. I'm not sure how many people hold a grudge against me. I'm sure some do. But actually, I don't need to hold a grudge against anybody and don't hold a grudge against anybody. Why? Because having Jesus in my life and you having Jesus in your life enables us to make peace with each other. And the third thing where Jesus brings peace, he, make, he brings peace with ourselves. Sadly, many people today do not like themselves. And that's very sad. And it's easy to fall into that. It's easy to fall into seeing ourselves as unworthy or unlovable. But 
Jesus Christ loves you and me without limit. He loves us with a love that we can't imagine. He loves us as a child. And that's an amazing thing to hold on to. So today, because of Jesus, we can have peace with God. Our sins are paid for. We can have peace with each other. We do not need to hold on to grudges and old hurts. We can let them go and find the healing that that brings to ourselves. And we can find peace with ourselves if we accept the peace that Christ it brings to us. I heard this story about Nelson who had apparently been off fighting the French and won and the French admiral comes to lay down to, to surrender and he turns up in Nelson's cabin and um, he's dressed in all his finery and all his regalia he's got his sword strapped to his side and he walks in and he walks up to Nelson as if to shake his hand do you remember when we used to greet each other by shaking hands and but Nelson takes two steps backwards and put his hand behind his back and says to the man your sword first please what he was really saying to this french admiral there needs to be a sign that we have stopped living in rebellion and we need to stop living in rebellion against god if we want to experience his peace Isaiah 9 and verse 2 said, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. I wonder if you can remember when you walked in darkness or if you feel that you are walking in darkness today. Well, as we move out of 2020 and into 2021, there is a great light for you. And that light is Jesus Christ. Did you remember all those names from that we read i'd just like to read them again to you wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace you see all these names are relational because they're all about this son that is going to be given it's about who he is to the people so the question as we leave 2020 and move into 21 who is jesus christ to you who is he to me and if he's my lord if he's my savior then all of those titles become true for me and for you amen i need to give you the answers to the quiz right who played robin hood in the 1991 film that was kevin costner in the Bible, what is the name of King Saul's son and David's friend? That was Jonathan. Which American actress married Prince Rainier in, uh, of Monaco in 1956? That was Grace Kelly. Who succeeded King David? That was Solomon. Which artist sang Purple Rain? That was Prince. How old was Jesus when he was circumcised? Eight days. Question seven. Who did Cinderella marry? That was Prince Charming. Question eight. What title was bestowed upon Prince Charles in 1969? That was the Prince of Wales. Which British Prime Minister declared he'd made peace for our time in 1938? Neville Chamberlain. And according to the cowl in the bleak midwinter, what should we give Jesus at Christmas? Well, maybe all the year. We should give him our heart. Hope you did okay with that. Do let me know how you got on. We're going to sing our next carol. It's Joy to the World.
like to invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for taking this time to share in our worship today. I really hope that you will have a, a great and blessed new year. And I do hope you can join us for a chat on the Jitsi chat um, following on from the service. And let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.